Good evening, folks. Good evening. Good to see you. Appreciate you being back in the Lord's house tonight. Okay. Everybody back to their seats. <laughs> Hope everybody's had a good afternoon. A little cooler in here now. A little hot in the 1045 service. A little better now. If it gets too hot, Jamie, I'll open the door for you. Over here. You ready to uh, go to the Lord in prayer tonight? Uh, outspoken prayer request? In? Yep, Dave. Can you remember us? Yes, sir. Remember Luke tonight. He's got a migraine. Uh oh. All right. Remember Luke and Rosa. Dave. Yeah. Hazel. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Farrah's got a flu cold, maybe. So y'all remember her, if you will, Renee. Um, I have this friend named Beverly Ashburn, and she lives in the UK, and she's not saved, though. I've tried to witness to her a little bit, and um. She would tell me I'm, I'm not religious and stuff, but her uh, husband, they just found out, has pancreatic cancer that spread to his liver. And um, she contacted me and she said, can you please pray? So at least her mm -hmm. heart is receptive. And I'm praying that through this, somehow they would come to know Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, so just keep he had some tests done on Friday, so they find out the extent, and if they can do chemo or whatever, they find out on Monday or Tuesday. But um, I'm just praying the fact that she asked for prayer. I yeah. mean, that's she's yeah. receptive towards it, and I'm just praying that you know God, God will have glory through this, sure. and that, you know. Sure. So her name's Beverly. Beverly. And her her husband's name is Rick. Beverly and Rick tonight. Any other? Jerry. Yeah, I've got two uh, neighbors that live on the same block I do. One of them named is Nicky King. He's been diagnosed with stage three uh, colon cancer, I think. We'll call him next week for lunch. And then also a couple doors down to her is a good friend of mine, uh, Ricky Queen. The Queen and Queen, and he, he got back on it. So. Right. Yeah, Nicky King and Ricky Queen. <coughs> All right, remember those tonight? Will and Brett? Hilda? Uh, <clears throat> Christ Kent, he finds out on Thursday what the procedure is going to be for his uh, cancer. Okay. Can you pray for Kent? Vicki? Um, the Dwight Hill family, she passed away this morning. Uh, the Hill family? Uh, my neighbor across the street, their son went to the labor and feed uh -huh. to the house for addiction. Uh -huh. And uh, seems like he's doing a little better. Just, his name is Jeremy. Just pray that he would. His healing is going to come through Jesus. Sure. Not through man, or not through his power, but through Jesus. Right. right. Help, you know, you get that through Jesus, he won't never be healed of that addiction. Amen. Jerry? Jerry? Well, Frank, Frank Cross and uh, Wayne and James. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Did you say his name was Jerry? Jeremy, yes, sir. Any others? Thank you. Remember the Brenda Tendale? Um, I don't have an update, but um, he, um, say his name was? Tommy Evans. Tommy Evans. And then uh, Deanna Lackey, uh, they own the decorated stage there in Thomasville. She was, uh, was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer, I think, last week. So. All right. There it goes. Amen. Keep doing the prayer. Continue to pray for D. Jimmy doing okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Jimmy. The Hagans. Any others? Larry. Oh, yeah, I see that coming up at 30. Just pray to uh, find something to see what caused my problems. All right. Remember Larry? Remember uh, Julian Reitzel? He had that shoulder replacement surgery on the 27th. Any others? James? Uh, I continue to remember my mom. We saw the day. Uh, I tell you, I'm her. She had the bottom part of her leg cut off. But she's in good spirits. That's the best I've seen her in years. And, uh, it is what it is, and she got to move on. And, you know, we continue to pray, you know, for salvation. But mm -hmm. very 
very good. Very smart. It was uplifting. Good. Good. Remember James' mother. Remember Sally's brother. Any others? Yes, ma'am. Kenneth and Medoy. Kenneth and Medoy. That's exactly right. Remember them? Keep them in prayer. That's it? Got, I got one more. Yes, sir. My uh, niece, her name is Ashley, and her husband is Ismail. And I don't know, you know, he, he comes from a, like a Muslim background. Yeah. And they're married. And they both have COVID right now. And they, they're trying to get some help with their COVID. And he's been running a fever like six or seven days. And they won't give them any help because they're so young. And But not only do they need help uh, physically, but I, 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 I think they need more help spiritually. Yeah. And so they've been talking to us, and we've been witnessing through texts and phone calls and stuff. But I want, I want them to get right spiritual. Amen. 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 It's amazing. Just like with Renee's friends over in the UK and things like that. Folks go through hard times. Heart gets tender sometimes. Start seeking the Lord. Right. Somebody asked for prayer. It says in the book of Romans that no man seeketh after God. If a person starts asking for prayer, if they start asking questions about the Bible or things like that, that's not that's not their own doings. That's, that's right. not how it works. Right. Right. Uh, we just we need to we need to see God's hand in that and, and pray that the Lord just continue to use that. Right. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's pray for the service tonight. Pray for Brother Jamie. He's going to bring the message tonight. Altars open if you'd like to come and pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. It's been good to be back in your house and, and to worship and, and to fellowship together. And so, Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this opportunity that we have once again tonight to come back together. <clears throat> we thank you for the privilege that you give us to call upon the name of Jesus Christ, to come boldly before the throne of grace. And Father, we just uh, we ask that you forgive us for our, our slackness in prayer, but we are very thankful, God, that, that we do have that opportunity to be able to cast all of our cares upon you. Uh, Lord, we think about the physical needs uh, that have been mentioned here tonight, and uh, then, Father, the spiritual needs. And, and Lord, we know uh, we can't touch and, and, and change and, and lives and situations, but we know that you can. And, so, Father, we just come before you praying in faith tonight that you just have your hand upon each one of these situations, each one of these that are sick. Uh, Lord, those that are lost, those that are backslidden on God, have grown cold. Uh, Father, we pray for each one of them tonight. We ask that your Holy Spirit would move on them uh, physically, uh, but as Brother David has said, more importantly, spiritually, Lord. And, uh, Father, I know that there's been a lot of sickness and a lot of uh, loved ones that have passed away in the last uh, 18 months or so. And God, we just ask for your comfort. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort hearts and that you would bring peace. Uh, we are thankful for the peace that Jesus Christ gives. It's not like the peace we might find out in the world, Father. It is a peace that passes all understanding. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We just ask that you'd work in these situations, God. We do pray for healing. We're so thankful for answered prayer, God. Thank you that people are feeling better. Thank you that Rose is home from the hospital. We pray for Luke tonight with the migraine. <coughs> God, that you minister to them. We thank you for the work that you have done in David's life uh, physically, uh, that he's doing better. And, and God, we thank you for his testimony this morning about how you've changed his life spiritually. And so, God, we give you praise and glory for that. Uh, Father, thank you for uh, hearing and answering prayer. Thank you for meeting needs. Thank you for your protection. And God, we just ask once again that, that you just have your way in the lives of and the situations that are going on in people's lives right now. Father, we pray tonight for the service. I pray for Brother Jamie, for your blessings and anointing upon him. I ask that you prepare our hearts for the message tonight, God, that we might receive what you have for us. And Lord, that our lives will be changed tonight. And uh, Father, that you would be glorified and that Jesus Christ would be exalted. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. And we want to just give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
conference tonight at open at 295. 295, stay and see. Tell me the story of Jesus. Six and nine on New Year's Eve, and we'll have popcorn and snacks and drinks and good time of fellowship. And uh, let's see, the Christmas play is going to be January the 9th at six o'clock in the evening. So don't uh, forget about that. Be in prayer for uh, everybody that's involved in the play and all the things that need to go on between now and then. Remember Lynn in prayer, and then that morning at 10:45 will be the children's. Uh, they'll get up and. Uh, say their parts and things at 10.45 that morning. So, a lot of things going on, uh, folks. Don't forget about the baby bottles. Have those in by December the 9th. Anything else need to be announced tonight? Yeah, all right. Well, let's worship the Lord with our gifts.
Well, Father in heaven, once again, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be back at church. Yes. It's a wonderful thing to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done, the way you've carried us through. We Thank pray you. for the families that are sick. Yeah. And now, Lord, comes a special time where we have an opportunity to give back. Yeah. So, Lord, you bless this offering. Yeah. You take it and use it. You build up your kingdom with it. Yes. You make uh, the world better because of what's contributed tonight. We know that you can take little and make much. Yes. So we're looking to, for you to do something great. All this we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother.
that is simply by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what we're heading towards? We're heading towards that same city. Amen. And I believe by faith that we'll see that city. Yes, and, and so here, here's he said, by it they obtained a good report. And uh, this is all I want is just to have a good report, not only with you, but with God. Yes. And, and, and so here's what I, in my mind that I want to help you because you're just like me, uh, maybe a little different. But see, we walk by faith, not by sight. That's, That's what right. the Bible says. Sometimes we can't see that city. Uh, it gets cloudy outside. And, 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 and God said just simply walk by faith. He said this is how they got there. And, and so in verse 16, I read there that uh, they, was, they was heading for that city. This is Abraham. I mean one of the greatest or, uh, that, that there's ever been in the Bible. This is Abraham we're talking about. And you'll see that he was headed for that city. He had his boys with him. His heirs, no, it wasn't many. Uh, and he was headed to that city. You see, and it says they dwelled in tabernacles. That means they lived in uh, uh, tents, uh, if you will. That's yeah. what they lived in. They didn't have the big uh, castles that, that people may have had. They lived in tents. And every day, I believe they would have pulled up stakes and, and said, you know what? He looked at Sarah and said, you know what? Uh, we've been here long enough. We're, he told us to head to that city. we got to pull up stakes to this thing and just keep heading that way. And, and I could see as they were traveling, uh, you know Sarah might have said, are you sure we're headed the right way? And I had to say that about Sarah. Most time it's me telling Audrey that. And Audrey says, no, no. You know this is the path God's got us on. Let's just keep heading that way. So, uh, But I can see this. It, it said for every day uh, that they sojourned. They kept traveling. It says they was pilgrims and, uh, and strangers. This wasn't their home. They, and, and so here's what I'm telling you. I can see as they may have been traveling, there would have been that doubt saying, are you sure, God, this is the way you told me to go? Right. And old Abraham would say, uh, uh, and Sarah might have said, can't we just go back to uh, where we were? Can't we just go back there to where it was comfortable, where we, he told us to raise our family, we could have this, and we you know our friends are still back there. And Abraham, I believe Abraham would have looked at Sarah and said, Sarah, why don't you just look back to where we've come from? <laughs> Lord, I'm not planning on crying, but I probably will. He said, he, he, he said, Sarah, why don't you just take a look back and look how far we've come? Amen. And so, church, this is what I want to preach on uh, for just a minute, and it is we need to take a look back sometimes to see where we're heading. Amen. I mean, we need to just sometimes just take a, a look back and say, God, I, I see where you brought me from. Yes, and sir. just keep me heading the way we're heading. Amen. Look, Amen. we always say, don't look back. I mean, we, we tell everybody, don't, I teach it at home. Every, every, every Thursday night, I try to go get down there. And I tell every group of men, don't, don't focus on your past. Don't live there. Don't look back. And, and, and we'll say, don't turn around. Keep it full steam ahead. Keep your eyes ahead. Keep heading that way. And we'll see in Genesis 19, you know what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back. And we'll say, don't ever look back. And in, 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 in 2 Chronicles, you'll see that Judah, it says, when he looked back, he said that the, he seen the battle was still behind him. And I was thinking about this. Sometimes we'll look back and it, it seems like that enemy is still showing itself back there. And I, I'll just be honest with you. I, there's some people I've told you before, I hope I never see them again until I get to heaven. You know why? Because my past was that book dark. I mean, yeah. uh, there's things I, I wish I could get out of my mind that I can, and, and I try and block it out, and I say, God, uh, you put me here in this position. It may not be much to you, but if you come from where I come from, this is a big stage, all right? And, and I say, Lord, I never want to see them, and, uh, and here it may be something else with you, but we'll, look, we'll, we'll say, I don't even want to look back there because the battle was still back there following me, and this is how Judah was, and, 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 and here, here's what I'm telling you, something from your past. It keeps drag falling behind you. You try and keep from looking at that thing. And that thing that you drug around for so long, it just keeps coming behind. This is where Judah was at. And we teach ourselves, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Keep your eyes on the prize of the mark of the high calling of God, right? This is Bible. And here's what I'm telling you. Why is that? Why can't we shake it? Why do we keep dwelling on that thing back there? And, and why does it keep showing up? And here's what I believe it is. I believe it's because God says if every now and then you'll look back there and see that, you'll keep heading to that city. Oh, and, and so look, so look, sometimes we feel like we're not gaining no ground. 
You feel like I'm just stagnant. I mean, I, I'm just sitting right here. I'm just like Sarah saying, I don't see that city no more. Uh, and, 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 and we feel like we're not gaining no ground. Why don't you just take a look back to where you came from? Right. And so here's what I'm telling you. I don't care if you've been saved for two days or 20, 40 years, whatever. If you'll take a look back, you'll see that God has you heading the right way. Amen. And look, sometimes I think we need to just look back to where we're come from. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm not getting all to that. We've all been blessed. Uh, we've been blessed by the best. You can say what you want. But if you was able to put gas in your car and get to church tonight, yeah. you was watching that on Facebook with that $1,000 cell phone, you've been blessed. Amen. And so look, we can, we can just look back financially where he's brought us from if you want to. Uh, but I'm talking about even spiritually. Uh, look back. And here's what I'm telling you, church. I have a long ways to go. I sure do. But I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. And so look, I, I believe it's for me to notice if nobody else, right? You women, ain't you? Uh, uh, sometimes when I'm doubting where I'm headed, God will take me back to where I came from. Amen. And I said, God, but I thought this is what you had me do. And, and I don't feel like I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching that. I'm not getting towards that city. And God said, why don't you just look back there 25 years ago? Right. Right. <laughs> He'll say, don't you remember where you was? That's right. uh, uh, look, maybe some of you was born perfect. I wasn't. Uh, but here's what I'm telling you. He says, uh, don't you remember where I brought you from? And here's Mark chapter 11. It says, And, and Peter uh, called to remember, said unto him, Lord, the fig tree was thou cursed. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking about Peter as he's coming. Uh, Jesus is going to overturn the tables in the uh, tabernacle for the, the money exchangers. And, and they come to this fig tree. And the Bible says that Peter brought it to his mind. It says, Lord, I remember the day you cursed that fig tree. I remember that. Look, sometimes, folks, we need to remember where God brought us from. Hebrews 10, 32, it says, But call to remembrance the former days, in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fire of afflictions. Sometimes we need to remember where God's brought us from. Amen. Church, we need to take a look back and see where we're headed. We're still headed to that city. Amen. God's still good. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. And some people have never moved. I'm, I'm looking, and this week I've been looking at this, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm glad there's not 200 people in here. You know who I knew would be here tonight? I felt like people that love the Lord. Amen. I'll be honest with you, I like preaching to four or 500, don't you? Okay. And I like it whenever God says, why don't you just encourage the church? Amen. And look here, here's what I'm telling you, I see some people have never moved. They can't look back, they look back, they see it's still the same place where they think they started. Uh, no, no, people never ha have been much of a change in their life. Right. Never been a whole lot of desire for the things of God. Yep. And if that is you, or maybe you're watching, you need to start heading towards that city. Amen. <laughs> I believe we'll just put a foot out there, Steve. We'll be able to look back and say, thank God I've come a long way. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 11.10, For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And the only way we're going to get there is by God. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ that one day we're going to get to that city. And I like this. i got to move on. I didn't bring my watch because I thought, give me 15, 20 minutes, we're going home. But this city has foundations. Ain't that good? In 1 Corinthians 3, 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master, but I've laid the foundation of another build thereupon, but let every man take heed how he, take heed how he build it thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid in Jesus Christ. I'm glad this city has foundations. Yes, sir. And I believe if we'll take a look back, can you say I'm headed to that city? Amen. I mean, can you look back right now in your life, church, folks that's here, can you look back and say, yeah, I remember the day I made that profession right there, but have you gained any ground? Yeah. I mean, are you still sitting there where you nailed at? Yeah. I ain't trying to hurt you, I'm trying to help you. But here's what I'm telling you. If we look back, child of God, I'm going to give you a couple things you'll find. You'll find that He's always been faithful. Amen. I mean, there's never been a time, never been a time, He wasn't faithful. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's never been a time He's ever let me down. Amen. Ain't that good? Yes, sir. Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> there's never been a time... When I, there's been times I didn't get exactly what I thought I wanted. 
But there's never been a time that he didn't know what was best because of his Amen. Amen. Right. There's never been a time that he didn't bail me out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I was thinking about this. I don't know if my mom was watching or not. I don't want to embarrass her. But she, I, we come through High Point yesterday and I told Audrey, I said, I remember coming up here to the uh, parade, the High Point parade. My mom, she would embarrass you. I mean, when that band would come, I, I, she, here she'd start and we'd leave and go on the other side of the road. So look, Mama, if you're watching, I'll never forget this. I was sitting there last night and I was thinking, I remember, uh, it's been year, years, we was kids. I mean, Mark Winchester may remember, look back, maybe, I don't know. We was kids. And I told my sister, I said, take us to Kmart. Kmart. She drops us, I had cowboy boots on. Now, I'm not country. I mean, I'm country redneck, but I'm not country western. And I had on cowboy boots, and I said, I'm not wearing these boots. We're just going to walk home. And I took them boots off, and I left them in my sister's car. We went into Kmart, and I thought, I ain't walking home barefooted. So I put me on a pair of shoes, Matt. Guess what I did? I walked right out that door like them was my shoes. And so we went back, we walked home, and, and we got to uh, around all our buddies in the neighborhood, I said, boys, I stole these shoes at the Kmart. And we all thought that was cool, right? So you done it too, Hannah? <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about that, and here's what everybody said. Let's go back tonight and do it again. Mm. And I said, well, let's go. So we had one buddy that had driver's license. The rest of us about 12, 13. We go up there, and my buddy walks in there, walks over there to the shoe section, gets him a pair of shoes. I went and got a Randy Travis CD, and I stole it. I'll never forget it. And here's what I'm telling you. I walk out of that store. I get in that boy's car. I said, I got that Randy Travis CD. We get to waiting on my buddy that got these shoes. And guess what happened? He never come out. <laughs> and here's what I'm trying to tell you. You know what happened to us? We're at the High Point Police Station. And I called Mama, and I said, Mama, I've got caught stealing. If you don't mind, will you please come bail me out? And there was times after I got a little older, I'd get into the situation, and I wouldn't call Mama because I knew where she stood. I'd call my daddy and say, Daddy, he will come bail me out. <laughs> Last night I was sitting on the couch, and I thought, God, there's never been a time. And I messed up, and I said, God, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. Amen. 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 Will you bail me out? Amen. I got to go on. <laughs> but I believe if you'll take a look back, you'll see he's always been faithful. Yes, sir. You look back, there's never been a time that he didn't ever bail you out. Amen. No, I still suffer consequences. You can pull up my, my criminal record and you'll see that. <laughs> but he's always bailed me out. Amen. You'll take a look back. You'll see he's always been there. You've never been alone. That's right. In, in, in Exodus chapter 13, you'll see that he went before the children of Israel. In Exodus 14, you'll see that he came behind right. the children of Israel. And in, in, in Psalms 34, it says that we have angels in camp about us. Right. He's given us angels that in camp about us. And in Hebrews 13, 5, you'll see that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. In Psalms 139, he says, If I ascend uh, uh, into heaven, thou art there. If I make right. my bed in hell, thou art there. Yep. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you look back, I don't care what you've done, where you've been, you'll never see where God's not been right Amen. there with you. <laughs> when I've been in my lowest point in life, he's always been there. Amen. Oh, glory. When I've lost the dearest people to me in my life, been in that room, you've been there, he's been there. Amen. That's right. He's always been there. Always. I mean, he's always been right there, see? Amen. God, if you take a look back, you'll see promises that can't be broken. Right, God. Every day they got up, don't you know they was looking for that city? I bet every hilltop they came to, every valley they came yeah. to, I could see Sarah looking at Abraham and said, man, we've been in this valley for a long time. And he'd say, yeah, but it might just be right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 
Don't you know Noah, when he was building that ark, it's as if you read this chapter, you'll see this, but he was building that ark. He said, you know what, God, I've seen you folk, but fulfill those promises. I know it's going to be like you said it would. Abraham, he lived days knowing that uh, he lived those days after he knew that he had offered Isaac his son. He knew he would his promises would be be true. Yes. In Genesis 15, God had promised Abraham his descendants would be a, a mighty nation living in a promised land. Amen. They received a, a a promise of a city, and yet in their lifetime they never found it. He was promised that he would have his seed would multiply the earth, and yet he never seen it. But look, if you trace it back, where'd you come from? Huh? <laughs> These promises they died believing, yet they never was fulfilled in this lifetime. You see, I believe some of these promises are eternal. Amen. I believe in this city. Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he promised he'd come again. Amen. Right. 2 Corinthians 1 20 it says, For all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. Now to the glory of God by us. So I'm going to give you these three, four things here. We, we, I'm done. I'll try to get through them quick. But in verse 13, if you'll look back, if you'll take a look behind you, take a look back at where you came from, see where you're heading. In verse 13, you'll see the profession that was made. You see in 13, what did he say? He said, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but had seen them afar out, were persuaded of them, embraced them, and they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. I believe it was a profession that was made. That profession will give you hope. Yes. Amen. Sometimes David, old Satan, he'll say, it ain't quite like you think it is. And I'm glad I can take him back to December 29, 1996, and I'll say, no, right there it is. Amen. I know there was a profession that was assured. Look, that profession will give you hope. It will give you strength. It will encourage you. Hebrews 10, 23, what's it say? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful, that promise. Let me get on verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. If you'll take a look back, you'll see the progression that will keep you going. They didn't chase after the plenty or the, the pleasures of the world or regret or repent that they had left it. They had no desire to return to it. Hallelujah. You see, if he said it, it said if they would have been mindful of that city, yeah. I believe every day that old Satan probably would have come up. I don't want to get ahead of myself and said, why don't Sarah might have said, or she Sarah, Abraham may have told Sarah to Sarah back, why don't we just go back over there? <laughs> because of progression. They didn't take the opportunity, the opportunity that, uh, that offered itself to them to return. They had enough time to get back. They had the strength still in their bodies to get back to where they came from. They knew the way to get back. The only uh, the ones that they was traveling with them, they would have been more than willing them to go on. Steve, I don't, I don't mind if you keep going on by yourself. Say, so don't care. As long as I can get some of them right. Look, uh, they, their old friends would have been glad to receive them back in that world they come from. They had enough money for the journey. <laughs> but they stayed the course. Against all discouragements, against all the temptations. You need to listen to Steve's message last Wednesday night on that temptation. Look here. It, it gets all that to return. The only reason we progressed is because he's always been there. Amen. I mean, if you'll just take a look back, yes, sir. you'll see where God's brought you from. Amen. Verse 15, he says, mindful of where they come from. And let me read again. He, 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 it says, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Yeah. <sighs> Here's what Satan will do. He'll show you how good, just how good the world's doing mm -hmm. when you're down in that valley, oh, yeah. heading to that city. Oh, especially social media. He'll say, man, look at that. That's what he does. Yes, sir. And, and old Sarah, she may have looked at Abraham and said, Abraham, it just don't seem like we're getting anywhere. It seems like we're just spinning our wheels. And, and Abraham would have just said, baby, will you just look back and see how far we've come? Amen. <laughs> That's where Audrey takes me to about once a week. <laughs> but I believe there's, there will always be, Glenn taught me this, Glenn and I think of you a lot. <laughs> there will always be progression with God. Amen. It's a kingdom principle. That's right. First Thessalonians 3.12. It 
It says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do towards you. Ephesians 4, 16. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which joint supply of the court to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase in the body unto edifying of itself in love. And here's what I'm going to tell you. It's impossible for God not to have progression with God. He said He came to give us life and it more abundantly. Look, He's come to give us, as Steve told us, He owns the cattle on the thousand hills, right? He, 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 he owns that. It, and it's His that He gives to us. It's not the material things, but it's how we progress in life. Look, it's a kingdom thing. There'll be progression. In verse 16, it says, But now they desire a better country. I'm about done. I want you to see this before I finish. You see the not only the progression, we'll see that when we look back, but if we keep on, we'll see the potential that's still ahead. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians, uh, no, let me go to verse 16. I was going to read that. But now we, they desire a better country. You see, it's better than the one they come from. It's progression. In verse 16, it, it says that this is a heavenly, uh, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I see the potential that's ahead. Amen. <laughs> I mean, we can look back, church. I can. I believe others can. I believe some of you can. You can look back and say, you know what, God, I know you're not done with me yet. Amen. There's still potential in me. <laughs> This city had foundations. I told you that. Whose builder and maker was God. In 1 Peter 1.20, for barely who for, or, foreordained before the foundation of the world, I believe he's forming this city. And here, you know what will keep us from reaching our potential in God? Is, is deception. Being deceived. Deception keeps a lot of church from reaching their full potential. A lot of people in the church. We want to sit back and we'll say, you know what, this feels good right here. And then you'll get to the place where, God, I don't really feel like I'm going nowhere. And I can't do that. Lord, there's no way I can stand up there and do that. Or I can do this or go there and do this and do this. It's because Satan's deceived us. In Galatians 6, 7, he says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. You know what we see in the world today? We're reaping what we've been sowing. Right. We've been deceived. In Romans 7, 11, For sin taken an accusation that by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. And here's, here, here's, here's what I'm telling you, church. We're still here. Merry Christmas. But as long as you're still here, you're upright, and you're breathing, we still have opportunity. That's right. Amen. I believe that. I mean, Steve, it ain't a question what we was talking about there a while ago. It seems like we, we're, we're stuck in a lullaby. I mean, the church is asleep or something. I don't know yeah. what it is, but what's going on with us? We've been deceived. Amen. I ain't talking about the coronavirus. Bless God, I've had that means twice. I don't want it no more. I'm telling you, it's real. I don't want it. But Satan has used something to deceive us. Yes, sir. That's what he does. We're not reaching our potential. <clears throat> so while you're alive and still breathing, we still have potential. It was deception that made Gideon believe he was a slave when God saw him as a champion. It was Jonah was deceived when he, 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 from winning the entire city of Nineveh to God. It was deception that kept the children of Israel from reaching the promised land because of those giants. And it's deception that will minimize your potential and keep you weak. And here's what I'm telling you, church. Satan's a liar. Amen. And I believe God's given me this. I'm done. You can stand to your feet. I believe, I believe God's given me this thought for me, for sure. But I believe he's given this to me to share with you, the ones that are here. Because look, sometimes I think it's now. We need to just take a look back and say, God, you've never left me. Amen. You never forsook me. You've never failed me. Your plan's always been best. Amen. And if you look back, you'll see there's always been, we've always progressed. Amen. He's always held true on his promises. Yes, yes. He can't fail you. Satan's a liar. Just take a look back. We're still headed for a city. Whose builder and maker is God. Ain't that good? Amen. So I'm going to play this song. And I was listening to this on the way over. And I said, I believe that will fit right there with the message. But here's what I'm going to tell you. You can come to this altar if you want to. You can pray at your seat. If you've never been saved, you can't look back and say, Yeah, God, I, I know right then it's when you made a difference in my life. You need to be saved. 
And maybe you're here and you're doubting. Look, you're doubting that God's got you on the right path. And look, I, I, here's what I'm telling you. God will never fail you. That's right. That's right. It's impossible for God Amen. to fail you. Amen. You need to just take a look back. Or maybe you just want to thank God and say, you know what, God? I thank you for where you brought me from. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Play it, right?
because of you. God, it's by faith. But we love you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen.